guys, it's your boy, Barca Boy 103. Today we're gonna be doing the match preview for Barcelona versus Levante in La Liga. Just 48 hours after that nil-nil draw against Cadez, we're already back in action again in the league. The schedule is absolutely ridiculous. And we're at the Camp Nou against Levante and nothing but the three points because we are falling behind in the league title race. Will this be Ronald Coma's last game at the Camp Nou as a Barcelona manager? Who knows, it probably will be though to be honest. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 200 likes on this video. It'll be very much appreciated. Also make sure you hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already, and let's get into it. Kickoff time for this match will be taking place at 4.15 p.m. local time. It's gonna be a very early kickoff. And of course, this match will be taking place at the Camp Nou. And the referee for this match has been confirmed. On the pitch will be Isidro Escudero, and on the VR it will be Gilmo Fernandez. Let's start off by taking a look at the league table. Barcelona are currently sat in seventh place in La Liga on nine points after five games we have two wins and three draws still undefeated haven't lost a game but it feels like we lost three games because those three games that we drew were against very very winnable teams of course top of the table right now is Real Madrid on 16 points second place is Atletico Madrid on 14 points and our rival Sevilla and the league Tarris, of course are currently in fourth place on 11 points so right now we are very very behind Real Madrid but of course they have played one more game than us in the league but if we even win that one game we are still almost four points behind Real Madrid so in order to win this league title we're gonna have to win this game and of course Atletico Madrid and Sevilla are also doing very well so far in terms of you know their standing who they've faced so far and remember by the way Barcelona had a very easy running so far in the first few games now the big games come up we have Valencia, Real Madrid, Atletico, Sevilla game got postponed we're gonna have to play them soon too so it's going to be a big chance for Barcelona to regain the top spot in La Liga and if you take a look at our league title opponents and who they face off during this weekend Atletico Madrid will be playing against Alaves away from home that's actually happening right now as I'm recording this video later on today Sevilla will host Espanyol and Real Madrid will host Villarreal because Villarreal were very very good team in the league easily you know top seven ish top eight top six that could be a banana skin there for Real Madrid we'll see how they do but again very very easy and winnable games for those top teams if you take a look at our opponents in Levante and where they're currently standing in the league table they are currently in 16th place in La Liga on four points after playing six games they have zero wins four draws and two losses so all their points are coming in from draws and they are one spot away from the relegation zone. Would you be surprised if their first one of the season came against Barcelona at the Camp Nou? I wouldn't be. Let's now take a look at our opponents in Levante. As I just mentioned, they have not won a single game so far in La Liga. In their last five games, they haven't done too well. They lost to Celta Vigo 2 0. They drew 1 1 with Elche. They drew 1 1 with Rio Vallecano as well. Lost 1 0 to Rio Sociedad and they drew 3 3 with Real Madrid. Three games I want to take a look at quickly is their last game against Celta Vigo. Go, the 3-3 draw against Real Madrid and their 1-0 loss in Real Sociedad. Let's begin with that 3-3 draw against Real Madrid at home for them and of course I did end up watching this game and this game was very much end-to-end. -end. Every time there was a chance there was a goal and of course Levante were actually winning 3-2 and then their goalkeeper Aitor Fernandez got a red card which made things very very difficult. I believe the center back Ruben Vezo had to go in goal because they used all their subs. In the end Real Madrid got that one goal to equalize and they were knocking on the door for the last 10 minutes to get that winning goal in the end they couldn't do it mostly from Levante in this game they won that 4-3-3 very very strong and compact the main thing is that they took their chance during this game and that ended up getting them a point against Real Madrid let's now take a look at their 1-0 loss to Real Sociedad away from home again they won the very similar 4-3-3 but this time was more so a 4-4-2 in this game it wasn't really end-to-end -end. Levante were under pressure the entire time and this game was a complete opposite to Real Madrid they could not finish their chances whatsoever in the end Real Sociedad got the one goal they needed to take all the three points and lastly let's take a look at their last game in the league which was a 2-0 loss to Celta Vigo giving Celta Vigo their first win of the season I tell you what Levante were so bad in this game you can see like the players in their final third the wing backs of the two strikers were very very poor they did not have a single chance in this game when they got the you know one or two chances that you usually get in a game they absolutely fluffed it and again Celta Vigo they are very critical they took their chances very very well and in the end it was a very well deserved win for Celta Vigo so overall Levante so far in the league have not done too well but their manager Paco Lopez has our number they beat us a numerous amount of times over the past few years I think now Levante are becoming kind of one of you know our bogey teams because every time they show up against us they always turn up some players to look out for for them is of course the striker Roger Meter their captain Jose Luis Morales and their midfielder Campania 
he's very very strong in there as well of course keep an eye out for Mustafi as well he has joined Levante World Cup winner of course and of course he didn't do too well at Arsenal but always turns up against the big teams but again Levante I don't know why when they come to the camp new they always put in a good performance let's hope that's not the case this time but again Levante in front of goal when you give them chances under pressure they always take it and especially the striker Roger Marti in front of goal against the big teams he always turns up so Barcelona really have to be strong in the defense or to contain Levante during this game let's now get into the squad list the squad list has been released and confirmed and it is as follows Ter Stegen, Des, Pique, Araujo, Busquets, Ricky Puch, Memphis Depay, Ansu Fati as the number 10 on that squad list. Demir Nathan Coutinho Langlet, Luke Dion, Roberto Mengues, Omtiti Air Garcia, and Naki Pena, Nick Gonzalez, and Pablo Cabe. So overall, every first team player that is fit is in the squad list with the addition, the surprise addition of Ansu Fati's return. Let's now get into Ronald Coleman's press conference reaction. His press conference this morning, he didn't actually know pull away from it. He was asked a lot of questions by the media. Let's get in and see what he had to say. Starts off by saying that the return of Ansu Fati is very important. He's been away for a long time and we follow a plan to give him minutes if all goes well starting tomorrow He will play a maximum of 15 minutes. We're not gonna rush anything with Ansu Fati We have a plan that we're going to follow then Cohen was asked to talk to Juan Laporta after the match against Cadez He said that on the plane we talked about the game after Cadez. There is nothing else possible replacements for me I can't say much about this issue. I haven't been involved in reading the press for a long time I know the rumors are out there. All we have to do is win games We've heard to put the energy in things that we can actually control players complaining about the schedule it seems perfect to me that the players complain about that of course he's talking about PK and Roberto coming back from Cadets it's almost been 48 hours just for Sunday the players defend themselves and I think it's great that I always don't have to be the coach the president is the most important man in the club he can speak and give his opinion whatever he wants I have no problem I have to be involved in my job and win games other things don't really interest me Pablo Gave there are very good young players with a great future at this club Gabi may play tomorrow because because we only have 17 outfield players available. We are very limited and Gabby has shown in the short time that he has a place in this team. Against Cadez, we created four or five clear cut chances. It's difficult for us to create. We need one on one and speed and we have lost those players who have that effectiveness. We must not forget that. And he also mentioned how Memphis Depay was very disappointed after the game because he thought that he, you know, lost the game from Barcelona because he should have scored some of those chances. But in the end, Koma said, don't worry about it. We'll move on to the next game. As a fact, he will not be at a full capacity in two games or two weeks it all depends on his condition with the medical staff we have to be very cautious with Ansu he ended off by saying that since the beginning of the season we have done many things I accepted players exit for the good of the club of course referring to Emerson Royale and Antoine Griezmann and that concluded Ronald Coleman's press conference reaction had the match against Levante tomorrow let's now get into the lineup predictions we'll start with the manager Ronald Coleman I'm gonna try my best to predict this lineup because right now with the squad list and all the injured players it's gonna be near impossible to pick the entire 11 was maybe the last time breaking his lineup probably but anyways the lineup i think he'll go with is on the screen right now i think he'll go with terstegen in goal a back four mingueza pk arajo and des midfield three of busquets roberto and pablo gave and a front three of yusuf demir memphis depay and felipe coutinho so from the last match against cadet i think he'll keep the back five exactly the same i think he would replace maybe des but again we have no one at the moment. Midfield three, of course, Frankie De Jong will be suspended for this game after getting that red card against Cadez. The replacement for him in the team right now is Roberto as that box-to-box -box midfielder. Busquets has no replacement. He's going to come in again. And on the left-hand side, you could maybe go Ricky Puch. You could maybe go someone else like a Coutinho there. But I think he'll stick with Pablo Gabe because, again, we have no one else. In the front three, I think he'll drop Luke De Jong for Felipe Coutinho. I think he wants that flair in the camp new. You know, get some, the fans going, get some long shots, all that sort of stuff on free kicks as well. Could start Luke De Jong this game. I would not be surprised whatsoever. Could he start someone else? No, because we have no one again. We have no attacking options. We have Memphis. Demir, Coutinho if you want to count him, and Luke De Jong, that's it. The injuries have really, really killed us during this season. So that's something that I think that Ronald Koeman will select for this match. Let me down in the comments below what you think Ronald Koeman's going to go with. Now I'm going to show you guys my lineup, what I would do if I was the Barcelona coach, and I tell you what, my lineup is a bit controversial. I've gone this lineup on the screen right now. I've gone with Tristegen in goal, a back four, Mingueza, Eric Garcia, Araujo, and Des, a midfield three of Busquets, Ricky Puch, and Coutinho, and a front three of Roberto. Roberto, 
Luke De Jong and Memphis Depay. Now hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me explain myself. So the back five is gonna say the same for me. I would replace Eric Garcia for PK because of course, quick turnaround. Don't want PK to get injured. I think Eric Garcia with Arnold Araujo will be the future center back pairing. So they need time that we know it together, of course. I would drop Des if I could, but we have no one else. Megiza, he's done well at right back. I'll keep him there. Now in the midfield three, we have no one, right? You have Nico. Gabe, Busquets, pretty much that's it, and Roberto. So I didn't want to put Roberto in the midfield. I didn't really want to start Nico or Gabe at the camp new because we desperately need a result. So I've gone with you know, Ricky Puch on the right as that box of box and he can play that, of course. And I've gone Felipe Coutinho in the eight as that creative midfielder. Now in the front three, I've got Roberto on the wing just because I think Yusuf Demir, he was absolutely dreadful against Cadez. And we have no one else. We literally have no one else. I said, you know what? Who's the best player in the squad that can play that position? It's Roberto. I've, done, I've seen Roberto do well at right wing, you know, back in the 15, 16 season, had that, you know, assist for Suarez in the Classico. He's done, you know, well there. So I've gone with him there. Stuck with Luke De Jong as that number nine, because again, we have no one else. And I want that focal point in the team, because of course, in the last game, he did okay, you know, attracting the defenders, you know, keeping pressure away from the wingers in that sense. And of course, I don't really want to see Depay up there. I think Depay can only play a striker when he has, you know, Dembele and Ansu beside him with, you know, Roberto and Demir. He has to draw back and create. I don't want him to do that whatsoever. So with that being said, I would keep Depay on the left wing. And that is my lineup for the match against Levante. Let me know down in the comments below. Would you rather pick my lineup or Coma's lineup? Time now for my score prediction. What do I believe the result will be in this match? I'm going to go with Barcelona drawing this game 1-1. I cannot see Barcelona winning this game. I think Levante... At the Camp Nou, especially, I've always done, you know, fairly decently. They've always made it difficult, but in the end, we've always won because, you know, Messi and Magic or Suarez, you know, Golasso, something like that. I'm going to go with 1-1. One, one. I am praying to God we win this game because if we don't, there's going to be a lot of uproar. I think Barcelona can win this game, but how are we going to get goals? It'll come from, the, you know, the not firing Memphis, Luke De Jong header, Coutinho long shot, Demir wonder run. I have no idea how we're going to score, but we have to score goals in this game or to win. You know, famous quote there from Ronald Coleman. But in the end, I think that Barcelona will draw this game 1-1, maybe nil-nil, something like that. Let me know down in the comments below what you think the score line will be. So that's my match preview for Barcelona versus Levante in La Liga. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like. And of course, leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. The main thing I want to firstly is your score prediction. Secondly, lineups. Would you rather go with my lineup or Coma's lineup? If you disagree with both, leave me your lineups down in the comments below. Also, make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the live watch along. Long, set the reminder on the screen come and join me and watch the game with me follow you after the match with my match review so i'll see you guys tomorrow take care and forza barca